Welcome to the second Gongfu tea experiment in our video series. Today we're going to be looking at the difference between pre-warming and not pre-warming a cup when serving Gongfu tea. Remember the aim of Gongfu tea in this tradition is to brew the finest cup of tea possible. And to measure what a fine cup of tea means, of course we're using the 10 qualities of a fine cup of tea. Again, some of the excellent reasons to do experiments are that there are always linear reasons behind all of the steps and um, procedures in this brewing methodology, and there are also deeper reasons as well. And one of the first things we lose when we don't do experiments are the deeper reasons behind doing what we're doing. And of course we want to maintain grasp on those more surface level and linear reasons, the practical reasons for um, following this, this brewing methodology step by step and seeing why it makes such fine tea. So we're going to kind of look at that today in our experiment where we are going to pre-warm one cup and we're going to not pre-warm the other cup and basically just brew tea side by side, drink those two cups and again note any differences we notice. As usual, I don't want you to think about what's good or bad or right or wrong, just any differences you notice between the two cups. It might be a difference in flavor, in aroma, in mouth sensations. Use your own terminology and stick to your own experience and um, that's really going to facilitate progressing through these Gong Fu tea experiments. Like last time in the first experiment, we're going to be using these standard modern porcelain tulip shaped cups. For this one we only need two. I'm also using our authentic purple sand clay teapot. Again, remember it has to be that authentic, the real deal purple sand clay, otherwise it's not going to work. And uh, I'm using the same tea as last time, which is a lightly oxidized oolong. Um, I'm brewing it in a smaller quantity and I'm going to infuse it for a short period of time so that it's easier to notice any differences. Again, if you're using a new tea or a very dark tea, um, it can impede your ability to really notice the subtleties that are going on uh, when you're doing these experiments. And also if you don't have such a pot, you can literally just do this with two cups and hot water um, where you pre-warm one cup and you don't pre-warm the other and you're still going to gain all the benefits of the experiment because again, it's very obvious and yet it's really really important to lay the foundation and do these um, elementary Gong Fu experiments first so that we can build towards more complex ones. And uh, as always, please do it yourself as easy as it seems because there's actually a lot going on here, more than meets the eye and more than you can intellectually understand. So put it into your own experience, do the experiment, um, join us in our comment sections below and leave comments and questions um, and together we can have an educated discussion about why it is we're doing what we're doing, which is one of the main points of doing Gong Fu tea experiments. Um, hopefully we can touch on some of the deeper aspects of it and also the linear practical reasons and together we can brew finer and finer cups of tea. Remember the two caveats we mentioned before that tea is ultimately an aimless activity and it should be enjoyed thus. However, in this classroom setting, it's good for us to actually talk about the aim of Gong Fu tea, which like we said, is to make a finer cup of tea. And the other caveat is that you are the most important element because even with all of this teaware, um, nothing can really happen without you. So that's most important because we don't want you to feel like um, you can't do this because you don't have the right equipment. Um, you're the most important part and really the things you need are quite rudimentary. So please keep those two in mind. And um, now that I have my cups ready, I've got my pot, I've got my tea, uh, my water is on the boil and ready to go. And also I've got my notebook and pen so I can take notes during the experiment. Um, as usual, I will pre-warm some of my teaware. I'll flash infuse my tea and then I'm going to pre-warm one of the cups only. I'll leave the other one cool and uh, then I'll pour from the pot into those two cups, drink them side by side and once I'm finished I'll take my notes. We'll do at least two rounds again and then we can open up and have a deeper discussion about what's going on here. One last thing I'll mention before we start is that I am using a Jen Shui or a wastewater basin here to collect the wastewater both from the tea boat and the cups. That's going to be really important for all your experiments, so you're going to need something like that. And also, if you do have any other questions about some of the other steps you notice in the Gong Fu tea brewing procedure, um, do let us know and ask away, though we're most likely going to cover them in future experiments as well.
Good, so now that you know the procedure for this experiment, do it at least two or three times. And again, record your observations in every round. And notice that when I did it, I actually started with the, uh, the cool cup and then worked my way to the pre-warmed cup and I was going back and forth. Um, so that order is important and we can come back to that and talk about it in more detail later. If you're brewing tea by yourself and doing the experiments, which is great, you can just reflect on some of your own notes. Um, and that's the great thing about doing this video series is that you know, we, we form our own community and Global Tea Hut is a community in which we can um, talk about our observations and address our questions and so on and so forth. Um, and if you are at the table with a group of other people, now's the time to open up, let everybody express their observations, maybe have a group discussion at the very end. And like the first experiment, there are lots of implications that come from doing this one. And I hope it starts to make you ask questions like, is it important to pre-warm my cups or not? And why is that the case? And then are there situations where I would be willing to sacrifice pre-warming the cup or, or maybe not? And so again, doing these experiments are so important because you get to make educated decisions from your own experience instead of just doing something like random um, or something based on personal preference um, or something that's quicker and more convenient. And those are some of the pitfalls that um, bring adaptations into a tea ceremony or a tea session that don't necessarily facilitate a better cup of tea. Typically, if you're doing something that's personal preferenced, uh, quicker and more convenient, or done out of like some sort of profit motivation, these aren't great ways to make adaptations to a tea brewing method, especially one such as this, which has 300 years of history to it. And so by doing these experiments, we really honor that history by understanding what people have been doing for hundreds of years and really refining it to the point where we have it now and then to really understand um, how that brewing methodology makes such fine cups of tea. So ask yourself if pre-warming is important to you, do the experiment and then you can ask yourself where in a tea ceremony would you not even pre-warm a cup or why would you, you pre-warm a cup or why wouldn't you and what other tea vessels or uh, accoutrements are being used that either facilitate pre-warming or not pre-warming. So again, there's some really cool implications there. I hope you start thinking about some of the future experiments we're gonna do and even some new experiments on your own. If you like this video and you found it beneficial, hit the thumbs up button below and please subscribe so you can follow up on future videos all about Gong Fu Tea experiments. Again, there's lots of information at globalteahut.org and um, definitely check out the video for 10 qualities of a fine cup of tea. It's just really, really important to review and study those qualities if you're gonna do more experiments with us. Just to give you a quick snippet, the 10 qualities are based on mouth sensations, almost like the sensation of touch on your hands, but instead in your mouth, which means we often set aside flavor and aroma just temporarily because they tend to be very subjective and they're not a good measure for agreeing with other people whether it defines a fine cup of tea or not. So the more familiar you are with those more objective mouth sensations, the 10 qualities, the easier it is gonna be for you to notice subtler and subtler sensations from cup to cup. And together, we can then therefore make a finer cup of tea as we do these experiments together. So thanks again, and I'll see you for the next one. Sweet as yes.